I love your feet because they have wandered over the earth and through the wind and water until they brought you to me. Our feet carry our journeys. They hold our stories. From the first steps we take through childhood and into adulthood. Every step records a sound. Every step holds a memory. It's through our movements our lives grow and change. And it's our feet that carry us through all life's joys and pain. This is The Sound of Little Feet, a podcast about identity and family, orphans, foster care, and adoption, a little bit of wonder and awe, and the power of healing through play. These are the stories of people like you and me, and the journeys all of our feet have traveled to be here today. For a few minutes, just put everything down and come with me. Let's go on a treasure hunt together and let's just see if we can find ourselves some gold and diamonds. Hello everyone and welcome to The Sound of Little Feet. I'm your host, Matt Miller. This is our final episode in our seven part series focused on abused, abandoned, and orphaned children here in Japan. I hope that you found this to be a very powerful series, starting back in episode number four with Tomoya Nakajima. Tomoya shared about how he ended up living in a children's home and what his experiences living in a children's home were like. On episode number five, we had a very insightful conversation with MPL Mirai Nomori on their work with abused, abandoned, and orphaned children in Japan using the outdoors to empower and enable their lives for a better future. On episodes number six, seven, eight, and nine, we had four very powerful conversations with four international volunteers who are currently living here in Japan and have a very deep empathy and understanding for orphans and all vulnerable children around the world. As I just mentioned, each of them are currently living in Japan and are dedicating part of their free time to volunteer and support MPO Mirai no Mori. And now we've arrived to episode number 10 today with Naoji Takeda. Naoji runs Keen Footwear here in Japan and is on the board of Mirai no Mori. As Keen's leader here in Japan, it was Naoji's idea to create a documentary to raise awareness around Japan's most vulnerable children. Filming both these children's homes and MPO Mirai no Mori falls in line with Keen's values in terms of using nature as a tool to empower and enable all lives. So without further ado, let's jump into our series finale with Naoji Takeda on abused, abandoned, and orphaned children here in Japan. And welcome back to The Sound of Little Feet. Today's guest is Naoji Takeda. Naoji, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Naji, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, first of all, Matt, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot for having me here and honored to be on your show. Thank you. I am a general manager of Keen uh, Japan okay. um, and uh, also a uh, board member for Mirai Mori. Okay. So general manager is really uh, a, uh, like a president uh, for uh, this uh, Japan operation. Okay. Can you tell me, uh, have you always been involved in the outdoors or or what place, or what point of your life did the outdoors become an important part of your life? Uh, I, uh, you know, before Keen, um, I was not involved in uh, sort of outdoor business at all, um, but I was a uh, um, really avid windsurfer oh. growing up and um, uh, a big part of my uh, kind of uh, 20th and 30th okay. 
all the way to like 40s and sure. I still surf and and I also snowboard so the going outdoor is really like a big part of non-working life okay so uh, yeah that's cool okay kind of me um, can I talk a little bit about keen for a bit uh, why is Keen involved in so many environmental activities around the world? I mean, like, why does Keen believe that um, it's part of their responsibility to give back and to protect and to take care of our planet? Mm. Um, it's uh, that's kind of related to how Keen was born. Okay. Uh, and, and our founder, um, a, when they found um, this company, it was this uh, shoot called Newport. Everybody thought this was ugly shoes and don't work. Mm. And uh, and he was going to put all his money into to to go to uh, start this company. And everybody was like, eh, it's not going to work," and so on and so forth. So he told them, "Like, look, if I make money, if if I succeed by." You know, selling these shoes, uh, then I will give back to the to the mm-hmm. to the society or, or people in need. And sure enough, that was that shoe was received really well. He got a lot of big order. Yeah. And that next year, the the big tsunami in Philippine happened in 2003. And he actually, the money he didn't even earn. Uh, at that point, he uh, dedicated uh, almost a million dollar out of uh, his order wow. uh, into this relief effort. So that's kind of how this company was okay. uh, was born. Sure. Uh, and uh, it's the, one of the big pillar is to give back. Yeah. Uh, so it's just the, our nature, you know, helping people in needs and disasters, uh, and also. They help protect the uh, the place that we play because we are outdoor brand. Mm-hmm. Without the nature to go out, there's no business for us. Sure. I mean, personally, I'm impressed because I feel like a lot of companies talk the talk. They like to say they protect the, the environment, they take care of the earth, they watch over everyone. But really, I've seen Keen so active around the world, mm-hmm. and I've seen you as Keen's representative in Japan. Personally, you have gone to so many places within Japan to help support and assist. I mean, not only Keen, but you personally. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I've really seen Keen through you <laughs> live out its message. And that's really impressive to me. Thank you. I, uh, yes, um, I kind of going back to history, I lived in America uh, for about maybe 14 years and of which I spent a lot of time in New York, uh, New Jersey area and uh, when uh, uh, 2001, 9-11 happened, yeah. I was actually, it happens right in front of my eyes and and I saw, you know, the, that just unbelievable uh, event and a lot of people were uh, lost, uh, lives were lost and trying to Everybody kind of tried to overcome the situation, and I did what I could could have done. Sure. But there was n- I I really couldn't do a lot there. Yeah, you know, kind of a little bit of regret that left in me that couldn't help people there. Yeah. Since then, I I kind of um, got involved in the uh, <clears throat> uh, disaster recovery okay. effort when some crazy stuff like that happen again yeah. I would be the first one to kind of go help mm. uh, that just kind of uh, ignited my desire to go to uh, Tohoku when uh, yeah. 311 happened yeah. in 2011 um, and particularly in Ishinomaki area yeah. and still work with uh, many of the NPO that's still active yeah. uh, in the area and a lot of them started uh, in Tohoku uh, tsunami and, and earthquake disaster recovery effort, but they went on to help on uh, Niigata, they mm. help on uh, Kumamoto, mm. they help on the, just a big rain on the Western Japan. Sort of network of volunteers just kind of lived on. Yeah. And I kind of sort of start to help work in them. And then just that I ended up at King 
the company support that kind of effort. Yeah. So it's really worked out well. It's a great marriage. Yeah. A, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll message you sometimes, and it'll be after disaster, and I'll find out. Oh, you're actually in Kumamoto right now, or, or you're in Osaka, yeah. right. trying to help with the flooding. So I'm always really just impressed with like, you don't just talk the talk, but you walk the walk. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's one thing I, I don't know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm able to do is yeah. that uh, just when things like that happen, I would like to be the, you know, one of the first one to be there yeah. and to, uh, to kind of support uh, the NPOs on yeah. a relief uh, team that anything that we can do, any message that we can amplify so they could raise um, the funds yeah. to do what's needed there yeah so uh, that little thing i can do is mm-hmm. just to you know kind of report yeah <laughs> document yeah sure um, and let other people know i mean i think the very first time i recognized just keen's um desire to help was through mirai namori and just seeing uh, the donation of sandals um at summer camp and seeing these kids come with inadequate uh shoes mm-hmm. and then being able, given these amazing keen sandals to like go do adventures with throughout summer camp and seeing how much a pair of sandals can really help impact a children's week, mm. a child's week. And so, and then going to the winter camp and seeing you donate boots and just seeing keen involved with Mirai Namori and keen caring about these children who just don't have the required necessities to partake in these certain activities it makes a huge difference in their lives and it makes these memories that they can now take with them to the future right right yeah i think it's uh you know protective foot is yeah. very important um and alpha wear actually comes with toe protection yeah <laughs> and mm. that's just how that that shoe uh, got started and mm. that's um uh, and then you know they're 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 comfortable and then they're show footed so they're not afraid to go into the water mm-hmm. or going into the fresh powder snow to do, you know, explore. It's all about, you know, a, 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 having a, a sort of new step forward to the, the things or area that have never been to. That just, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty important, right? Yeah, like, I, you know. I feel like you, well, Keen and you have empowered these children to explore. Mm. Like through your footwear, they've been able to explore and go into areas in nature where they wouldn't be able to go to. Right, right. I think it's awesome. It's, it is awesome. Isn't it? It's like, amazing. That's so, like, not just a product that I'm trying to sell, yeah. but I, actually that does make people move and yeah. do things that they wouldn't have otherwise, yeah. right? That's kind of it's pretty cool stuff. It's, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and especially for these children. Right. So why did King decide to make a documentary here in Japan about some of Japan's most vulnerable children and bringing them into nature to help support and to help them deal with their trauma? Well, it's because of you. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me more. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, you know, I got involved with this NPO like when I joined this company, yeah. and it was relationship was built before. I didn't know much about them, and I, I kind of got to know them. And I, frankly, I saw your some of the early work, uh, and you know, shooting children's activities and camps and whatnot without, you know, like capturing their direct faces yeah. because of the privacy issues. Sure. And and then how you kind of depicted their feeling without capturing faces, mm-hmm. um, and kind of how it's kind of blends into the nature. I thought it was very amazing, and I just wanted to kind of expand that. Mm-hmm. That's really how um, I um, uh, thought about making this into a uh, you know documentary. Okay. Movie. Yeah, and what, so then why did you decide to focus on Mirai Namori? Uh, is because we are outdoor brand, right? Mm-hmm. So, and, uh, uh, and uh, bringing uh, children outside is just, it's just very important. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I th- think about this country, Japan, that we live, uh, Japan's 
having a uh, difficulty to uh, battle with this decreasing population and uh, you know just less and less uh, babies every year. Yeah. Um, if you think of it, there are already you know thirty thousand kids yeah. who are already born and, and being raised and then you know, rather than just you know spending money and effort into somebody who haven't even born why don't we have a better future for mm. uh, for those kids that's already here yeah and that's I thought that's just and then there's a lot we can do yeah. about it that's how we kind of get into the, the conclusion I think this is such a wonderful um, cause uh, to give more hope mm -hmm. or actually give just not just a hope actual tools mm -hmm. uh, so that they could be independent mm -hmm. and they can be successful they can learn things they can prepare for their future yeah is uh, is all about this uh, helping this man more yeah and I, and I I couldn't agree with you more and I and I really believe that like it's companies like keen who have been willing to dedicate the money and dedicate their resources and time to support me right Mori that really is helping to shape these children's future like if people individual people and if companies did not come along in these children's lives I don't know I would mean, just they have so much potential and they're they have just as much value as anyone else they just need people like companies like Keen and people like us to just come to lives and support them and right. tell them that they do have value right. and they can contribute. You tell a child that, then they start to believe that. They don't believe it, they start to act it out. Right. Yeah. So that's, I think it's a pretty powerful, uh, particularly when those kids are put it into the nature. Yeah. Like the environment is, yeah. you know, like, uh, it's not like, unless, I like their homes or the school. Mm -hmm. We put them into uh, in the middle of a of, of field. Mm -hmm. um, their mind is so much more sort of relaxed, and mm -hmm. and they are a lot more um, up to do things that they haven't tried. So, which is you know the the, the step that we wanted them to take. Right. So, yeah. That's a power of nature. I think. It is. I agree. What message uh, do you hope this film? conveys to the audience who watches it and I guess what kind of impact do you hope the film will make? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I, I like to convey, there, um, there's several things that I wanted to, to uh, convey through this movie. Is, is one is the uh, sort of beauty of Japan mm. um, and different seasons. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, Mirai Mori camps are all in four seasons, and that uh, the, the you know the scenes changes from you know snow to you know spring mountains to like summer with yeah. river and activities and fall is you know beautiful foliage whatever. So that's through the the uh, the the beauty. Uh, wanted to, to show if possible the transformation mm. of, of, of the kids mind sure and that would be a really you know beautiful story uh, uh, to tell the transformation mm -hmm. through the nature yeah. um, so it's I uh, that I, I thought would be sort of the power of nature okay uh, is also uh, can be uh, conveyed in mm. a pretty uh, powerful manner uh, that not just the uh, you know kids uh, living at homes. I think the power of nature kind of help transform people's mind in right. any situation. Definitely. So that's one message. That's uh, therefore we should kind of protect the places that we play, mm. protect these beautiful you know uh, nature and protect. These activities. Yeah. So that's, you know, the, the one message that that I think I hope it to to convey. Yeah. Um, obviously, the the other component is that sort of 
the kids have sort of limitless potential. Yeah. So that's sort of pretty moving story. Yeah. Like that. And I think the beauty of filming for a year is that, like you just said, they are a lot of them are really hesitant in the right. beginning, and they're really cautious and even not sure of us. But you know, after several interactions, after several months, after a year. It turns into trust, and it turns into a relationship, and it turns into support and bravery, and, and trying new things. So I'm excited to show that in the film. Right, right. It's so hard to tell the story to others, right, without showing. Yeah. <laughs> and the best thing is to be there for like you know two or three or three days. Yeah. And they'll understand what we're talking about. Yeah. But, Besides actually going there, this movie will be probably the best sort of communication tool yeah. um, uh, to convey what this NPO is trying to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so when we first talked and when we were discussing how can we create a film where we convey all this, but not, we can't show the children's faces, we can't sh share their voices, so then how do we? grab the audience and how, we, how do we bring them into the story. And that was a challenge in the beginning. And then, you know, Tomoya came along and, yeah. and agreed to share his story. And I'm really excited that yeah. he's going to be a part of it. And then just having all these other different aspects, talking about nature for a year and talking, you can, even though you don't see the child, you can see their, their fear. And by the end of the film, you don't see that fear. You see that, that bravery. Right. So... Right. I'm really glad that I guess that we filmed for a year rather than film for a week or so. Right, right, right. I think it's uh, it's it's, it's uh, that's I think it's the key. Um, yeah, and it really just uh, it's it's pretty magical yeah. uh, everything that happens in that. Uh, not not just a movie, but just how yeah. kids transform in in less than a year. It's true. So I want to end by uh, reading a quote, sharing a quote with you. There's a man named Mick Ebling. Um, he founded Not Impossible Labs, which creates uh, revolutionary technology for people just to overcome certain obstacles in their life. And I'm not sure if he originally said this or someone else said this, but I first heard it from him. Mm -hmm. And he said, if not now, when? If not me, then who? Mm -hmm. uh, what is this this quote mean to Keen? What does it mean to you? What does it mean to the children, to me right now, Mori? Mm, mm. I guess, how, how does it resonate with you? It's, to, to me, it's uh, sort of kind of personal. I mean, I, and up, up until maybe, you know, sort of 9-11, um, I was sort of, you know, looking at people involved in volunteer activities or doing give back <clears throat> a little bit you know, I uh, was a little bit of a doubt mm. whether they're motivated by motivated by something else, or they just want to put stuff on resume, or you know, kind of Hippocratic. Sure. Um, but um, <clears throat> and that sort of nine eleven and uh, three eleven kind of changed everything. Okay. And uh, and then I thought, you know, exactly like you know, if it's you know, it's it's not now when, or if not me, who. Yeah. By, you know, like I went to a 311 in Ishinomaki, and you know, did some uh, cookouts. Um, and there's a lot of others are doing it, and there's just an, you know one meal that I prepare for a disaster victims at the shelter. You know. I didn't need it to do that. I mean, sure. you know, there are like, uh, there's a bunch of others. And then there's, you know, some activity to like clean, some rubbles or whatever. Yeah. I mean, there's a, so little that one person can do. Sure. But after participating in that, that activity, I learned a lot hmm. so closely how change, that the whole town, the city, totally changed how relationship with people has changed it's and uh, um, that whole experience that just you know changed my mind uh, it's 
you know, so little a person can do, but a thousand or million times better than if you not do or if you not be there. Yeah. I tell my uh, my colleagues uh, to encourage every opportunity that they have um, to actually, you know, you go help volunteering or go help people in need, not because what you can do is going to be little, and then your money, you you you're a lot more highly paid people than cleaning a uh, you know mud out of uh, flood ho- flooded houses. But by you knowing what's going on and what's the reality of, of being a victim and a lot closer than you would see on TV mm-hmm. means a lot more. So yeah. that's how I think how I would kind of, yeah. you know, uh, take that statement. Yeah, so I mean, I guess what you're saying is that it, it, not, you're not only helping the current situation but that, that situation is actually empowering you as well in, right. in speaking and teaching you right. right it's just you know kind of look back and you know my early you know, younger days and it's, I didn't think it's a cool thing to just do like oh I do this volunteer help yeah. whatever um, and like I should probably you know focus on work and make old money so that is not a bad thinking mm-hmm. But it would be a lot better if I do that at the same time that you see what's going on yeah. there and then just become a part of the helping hands yeah. and understanding. And that's why it just even just a little help yeah. that I can do, I mean, just go into the disaster area one day, just do something. Yeah. Even just a day or just talk to people, uh, uh, just small activities yeah. that you can get involved um, is so important. I agree. Like, I mean, in the end, we n- most of us can't give very much. We can only give a little, but in the end, a little given by so, by every individual is a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. And then it's, I'll become the witness to tell stories. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll be just a, a guy watching TV. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's a uh, it's a big difference here, and yeah. I can impact so many more people that way. And, and I view it as like a global family. I mean, I guess I see your work as, you know, you're you're going to go cook in um, up in Ishinomaki for um, the, the people who went through that, or you're going down to Osaka to go help the flooding, or wherever you go, um, you're going, you know, to take care of your global family. And I think that's a really just yeah. It's a beautiful thing. So it's seeing family on, at a, on a different level. Yes. yes. And, and I really like that. Right. The people, you know, suffer from disasters. They're not asking for sort of like, you know, sort of compassion. Yeah. Right? Like they, don't, they don't need you to feel sorry. They yeah. just, uh, you, you feel like as if they're, they're part of your family. Yeah. And it just so becomes so natural when yeah. you're there uh, to do what you can do. Yeah. Yeah, well, thank you for like, I mean, I'm saying thank you, but like, you know, thank you just for being an example yeah. to, to, to your staff, to to me and to other people for, you know, playing your part and for, you know, giving back however you can. Cause that, that's encouraging to me. So thank you for that. Oh. Before we wrap up, is there um, anything else that you would like to add or say to our audience? Um, okay. Yeah. Um, first of all, uh, Keen Japan is, is hosting uh, Mirai no Mori's holiday party on uh, December 18th. Okay. And uh, at uh, uh, Quest Hall in Harajuku. Mm. Um, starting from 7 o'clock, uh, we'll, you know, the big uh, content of the party is a little bit of a sneak peek of your, your uh, footage. Yeah. That'll be great. Excited to share it. Uh, I just had a meeting with uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Sugi Namako. He's, he's the uh, uh, interesting chef um, and uh, the uh, sort of food research guy. Uh, and he's going to prepare a really, really beautiful um, holiday dinner. And we have music. Uh, there's a donut from a sake company to do a sake tasting oh, as well. Nice. Wow. So can anyone sign up to come? Oh, yes. Okay. yes. 
and uh, it's I, I think it's a five thousand yen, uh, but I, uh, it's three thousand would go to the Mirai no Mori. Oh, that's great. And the uh, rest is just the food cost. Yeah. Okay. So it's uh, you know, f- great party um, and uh, great food, and 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 then you can support this Mirai no Mori. So. Great. So I'll leave all the details about that um, underneath this video. Great. So uh, I'm really looking forward for for your movie. Now, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to hang out and talk. And thank you just for sharing all the stories today. Uh, everyone, we hope you have a great week, and we will see you next time on the Sound of the Little Feet. Take care. Wow, what a great episode, right? I apologize for the video feed suddenly cutting off. Unfortunately, one of the files got corrupted, and another uh, podcast interview that I previously aired with Bry cut out as well. So they were on the same file. It happens sometimes, and it's always a good idea to back up everything you do before you start editing. Naoji's story is pretty powerful, right? He had a major shift and change in his heart after after the events of 9-11 that have led and transpired to, you know, all of his involvement and all his um, volunteering around Japan and in times of need. Naoji, thank you so much for coming on and having a conversation and for sharing your story. So this wraps up our seven part series on abused, abandoned, and orphaned children here in Japan. I hope that you were able to learn a few things about what's going on in Japan with some of Japan's most vulnerable children, what an MPO is doing about it, and what kind of people are involved in helping to change and support these children. In 2019, the Sound of Little Feet will have a bunch of different series around different topics like depression, trauma, adoption, foster care, and we're going to be interviewing a lot of really interesting people, literally from around the world. But that's all in 2019 here on season two of The Sound of Little Feet. We still have three more episodes left of season one here in 2018. Each of the remaining three final episodes will focus on a different topic here on season one. Thank you so much for taking the time to walk with us through this series. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in. It would mean a lot to me personally and to the Sound of Little Feet podcast if you have a moment to head on over to our iTunes podcast, The Sound of Little Feet, to not only rate us, but leave a review. It really helps us with getting more exposure from Apple iTunes. Also, to please subscribe, like, and leave a comment on one of the videos here on our YouTube channels because it really helps us to get more exposure on YouTube. And the whole reason why this podcast exists is to reach out and support and encourage those who are grieving right now and need to connect on a deep level related to the issues that we're talking about here on this channel. We'll see you back here next week. Have a great day. Every